Skana is a champion many players may actually forget exists from time to time, especially considering just how many times Riot has tried to rework him. Currently, Skana is featured on the Rework 2022 poll, the last one was won by Udyr, and it's looking like chances are Shivana or Trindamir may win it this time around, at least from what I know at the time of recording. However, there is almost no doubt that at some point Skana is going to receive a rework. Those who aren't too familiar with Skana will likely know him for one thing and one thing only, his ultimate. Skana's ultimate is a powerful suppression that allows Skana to drag his target anywhere he moves, with the only counter being the item Quicksilver Sash. As a result, most builds for Skana will involve move speed and tanky items like Turbo Chem Tank and Dead Man's Plate in order to reach the desired target and focus purely on ulting carries. But Skana's technically capable and has been capable of far more for quite some times. Skana's Q, for example, is an AoE slash that charges for a few seconds after hitting an enemy. The charged Q now has bonus magic damage in addition to the physical damage of the base Q. For the longest time, this has been a great damage option and on his most recent iterations, reduces the cooldown by 0.25 seconds on basic attack on minions and monsters, and one whole second on basic attacks on enemy champions. Building AD and maybe some attack speed on Skana would actually lead to a hilarious amount of DPS while spamming this ability and under the influence of Skana's passive, the Crystal Spires, which grant a huge amount of attack speed, and under them, Skana would be a very formidable duelist, and to an extent, still is. I say still because the AD ratio on this ability was gutted from 33 to 45% AD based on ability level, down to merely 15% AD, trading it for some target's maximum health damage instead. This made Skana stronger in theory when fighting other tanks or bruisers, like if peeling enemies off his own carries, but significantly weaker at dueling squishier enemies, including duelists he once could have held his own against easily in a Crystal Spire, like Master Yi. The nerf was so bad that the very next patch, patch 10.16, the mana cost was reduced and the ratio was increased to 20% AD, but still a far cry from the potential of what it used to have. The reason Skana likely received a change like this in the first place was because his kit is so varied, but the most viable and common build were tank builds that focused on rapidly reaching targets for his ultimate. So from Riot's perspective, a slap to an AD ratio likely won't affect a pure tank like Skana very much. Even though this rework was supposed to be a juggernaut, the kind of champion to scale damage and tankiness together in exchange for mobility. This rework from Season 5 was from Riot's rather experimental phase, where they reworked four champions at once to be the first true Juggernaut class champions, and three of which got a further rework because they were just too weird, janky, weak, or strong. Garen became a serial killer who would deal additional true damage to the enemy villain, who was the enemy with the most recent kills. Darius received more power in exchange for his ult no longer resetting and his Q having a delay added, the prior being given to him again in a later patch. Mordekaiser was allowed to gain solo XP from duo lanes, turn Dragon into a ghost among many other changes that we no longer have the joy of experiencing, and Skarna lost his free hit Braum like stun passive in exchange for a stun mark on his E and the power of Crystal Spires that spawn on the map when he is in game. In fact, the free hit stun was also a Skana rework from even earlier, as before then, Skana's Q was used to perma slow enemy champions by using charged Qs to slow the enemy, no Rylai's needed, which in combination with his speedy W and alt suppression made him a very difficult champion to get away from. I'm sure some players wish we could just revert Skana to his base form, but Skana is up for a rework and though at the time of recording this I am unaware of who won or will win the vote, I can't help but speculate what Riot planned to do with Skana. According to the poll, Riot wrote, Skana does a little bit of everything but doesn't really excel at anything. We'd want to keep his ability to kidnap enemies with his ult in some form, but otherwise we'd rebuild from the ground up. To me, this sounds like Riot will remove the versatility in Skarna's kit that I really enjoy, and likely appeal to the hard focus on ulting enemy carries as a CC tank, likely nerfed in a similar way to Warwick's rework, who used to have his suppression ultimate as an instant point and click. As a Skarna enjoyer, I think the main limiting factor on Skarna right now is the Spires. 
Although I've come to love fighting under them, they're just too vital for him that losing early game as a team often means losing control of the Spires, further pushing Skarner back, bringing more reason to just build tank and focus on ulting enemies, rather than making use of the Spires' stats. I feel like all Skarna really needs is to somehow replace the Spires without breaking his stats completely. He has counterplay already in how he has no dash and only has melee range abilities outside of his one projectile, and only move speed as an option to reach his opponents. So loading him with stats I don't think is a bad idea. He'll never actually reach his targets most of the time without some teamwork or some items. Skarna was originally reworked in Season 5 to be a Juggernaut and in my experience he does and has fulfilled this gameplay fantasy while playing him with a Bruisery Juggernaut build with some AD. Though a simple solution in theory would be to remove his spires and just give some of their stats back to Skarna per level so he scales damage into late game like other Juggernauts while having to solve the issue of mobility through summoner spells, items, and teamwork. Another would be to give him an active task that rewards him with stacks that grant him stats like Crystal Spires would. For example, something like Bard Chimes, Fresh Souls, Kindred Marks, but made unique to Skarna. Spires become less reliable as one team begins to gain map dominance, so perhaps capturing Spires can give Skarna stacks, the Spire Zone, and maybe some temporary buffs. Keeping the capture point gameplay he currently has, but after a certain point, the buffs become permanent. So he's no longer reliant on them come the mid-late game, and so denying the Spires doesn't completely remove Skarna's options other than run out enemy carry and capture them, which even then can sometimes fail without the Spire speed. This is similar to Kindred gaining 4 marks for that power spike of increased range, so it isn't unheard of in League already. I would personally hate for Riot to remove Skarnet's versatility and current Juggernaut identity, and if I had refund tokens left I would immediately use them all on Skarnet skins should they turn him into some kind of pure CC tank. Unfortunately, I wasted them on refunding a Blue Essence purchase of Karthus, who I bought again later, and a bugged refund on Assassin Master Yi for that sweet 260 RP. I don't think that anything I propose is going to be amazing, and I could even be disappointed if my own changes were implemented. But I would like to increase some level of discussion around the Skarna rework because having my favourite champion be reworked and removed from the game is not something I want to experience again and don't want any of the other Skarna mains to have to experience again. I know I'm not the only person that plays Skarna and doesn't just build pure tank. Viability aside, it's really fun to see what Skarna can do with some different builds. And once again, try not to sound like a broken record, I do not want to lose his versatility. Let me know what you think of Skarna, what Riot might do, and what your ideal Skarna changes would be. Do you agree or disagree with what I've had to mindlessly ramble about here? Leave a comment below, and while you're at it, hit like and consider subscribing for more League of Legends videos like this one. This is a little different for the channel right now, it's the first of its kind I suppose, so any support shown for this is encouragement to do more of this kind of stuff. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.